probably the busiest eight weeks you've had since Olympia. Eight weeks removed from Olympia, you guys already. And uh, it's gone by pretty quick. We've been so busy since literally the time we got off stage till just about this weekend. Because it was Narvin's birthday right after Olympia. So right when we left Vegas, we came back here and we celebrated for a few days with her. And then like what, one or two days later, we got on a plane and left for China for two weeks. And we came back home and we had the, the fundraiser to plan, which was a complete success. It was awesome. If you guys haven't seen the video of the fundraiser, make sure you guys check it out because it was amazing. Incredible turnout. It was just, um, I already have this one. <clears throat> it's exciting for me to see that we were able to create something and produce like we did in such a short, short amount of time. We did it in 10 weeks in the middle of my Olympia prep. And not only that, but I went to China like a month out from the, from the event and we still were able to come back home get everything together and pull it off. And not only we pull it off, but pull it off in a way that was like extremely successful. We didn't have very many hiccups. And um, of course we have a lot of things we learned from, from this past year to make it better for next year. But um, for the first ever event that I, I myself put on and my team, it was a real, real good success. I think I can count how, how many times I missed cardio on one hand since Olympia. Uh, I'm doing that every morning, but unfortunately cardio doesn't counter all the cookies and ice cream I've been eating at nighttime. That's why I'm doing cardio and she's not right now. We're gonna head out. I love you. See you in a little bit. Like I literally went all through school to like nobody liked me. Kids would talk shit behind my back. And I wasn't necessarily the popular kid. I was always good at sports. I always tell out, say this in interviews, good at sports. I wasn't a nerd. What do you want to call it? Just kids just didn't like me. So I grew up with that all my life, feeling like people didn't like me. So now being the four-time champ, it's been hard for me to keep friends around to a certain degree. Granted, there's been a lot of snakes that have come in, come, and crawl, come you know, slither into the grass since I've been the champ. A lot of them, a lot of people have definitely tried taking advantage of me and haven't been real friends. But for those friends that are really my, that are real friends, it's been hard for me to almost process that and to believe that because the whole, my whole life I've been conditioned to feel like people didn't like me. I think it's important that I try to learn how to enjoy the process and enjoy the things as I'm going through it. Otherwise, it's gonna be gone. And it's funny because I say, my, say this to myself, but I don't do it, I don't feel it. So it's almost my, my way of reminding myself right now. Today I'm writing um, a check that we raised from the Orange County Fall Fitness Festival to the YMCA today. And uh, pretty big charity, pretty big donations. We're writing a $10,000 check to the YMCA today. I'm really excited about that. We put a lot of hard work into raising money for this event. so. Today's the day we actually get to present the check and it feels really good. I mean, that's a pretty good sized check. So this is for our first foundation. We raised over $21,000 at the, uh, the first ever Fall Fitness Festival. Uh, it was a little short of our goal. My goal was 30,000, but again, we only had 10 weeks to plan this and we produced pretty well. So I'm really excited. We were able to present checks to the St. Jude yesterday, as well as American Red Cross. The checks are $4,000 and $2,000. So that was a really good start to the week. Uh, like I said, today, back to the YMCA, we're going to the Children's, the children's Center and writing a check to them for 10 grand to see the kids and everything. Uh, we added beta alanine to our multivitamin. This multi is meant to be taken throughout the day. So there's some multivitamins taken one a day. This is meant to be taken two to three times a day. And the reason behind, it's important to give these nutrients in your body every you know, eight to 12 hours. This is how you're gonna keep your levels up throughout the day instead of letting them come up and then come back down. Um, not only that, but beta alanine has been proven to be more effective taken in smaller doses throughout the day opposed to taking a mega dose right before you train. So beta alanine is gonna help with that lactic acid build up in your training. If you guys are training, you guys feel that burn start to set in, you can't really get through those last few reps because it's burning so bad. That's your lactic acid build up and beta alanine will help monitor and control that so it will limit the amount of burn, the amount of lactic acid buildup, so you can squeeze out those extra few reps. More reps, more growth, bigger up. These are the new flavors of our Carnagen. Carnagen Plus Peach Tea and the regular Carnagen Peach Tea. Nice 
options are great, they're nice to have, but they're not everything. So for any people that are trying to make money out there on social media, doing things that put you out of your realm or put yourself out there in a way you don't need to be out there in order for you to make money, you know, that's not gonna make you happy. Money's not gonna do it. Nice things isn't gonna do it. But doing things to other people is what really is gonna do it for you. And that all seemed far-fetched to me when I had Phil telling me that and Jay and Hani told me that like four or five years ago. You know, you gotta capitalize on what you're doing, but make sure the reason why you're doing it. You know, Bradley even Bradley Martin even polished up on that at the seminar on two weeks ago when they were doing the success seminar was, you know, figure out what your why is. And I was watching that in Stacy's video that she put out for us. And I didn't get a chance to listen to them completely, but it's a very important it's like you have to understand why you're doing what you're doing, not necessarily, you know, what what it's for. You know, we're not doing it just for the money, but I'm not bodybuilding just for the trophies, but you know, the, the importance of impacting other people is what has been brought to my attention as of, as of recently, especially this past year. You know, and the way you know my fans and followers have started to interact with me, it's you know, it feels more of a responsibility on my behalf now, opposed to an obligation. It's something that I, w- I want to do, something I'm responsible to do. So, right now we're at Best Buy. We're gonna go in. I gotta get a new laptop. My laptop is so outdated. It's from like I don't know. I had got it like when I first turned pro. So I'm due for a new new laptop. And also we're getting a drone. Stacy's eager to fly the drone around. So <laughs> content's gonna be dope this upcoming year. We're gonna constantly keep trying to improve things and put good stuff out there for you guys to motivate and inspire you. And uh, that's what this whole year's about. Of course, we'll be chasing my fifth Olympia title as we get closer to September of next year. But as of right now, my goals are how I can affect the world in a, in a better, more positive way. Not only for all of you guys, but it helps myself as well. So it creates more meaning behind everything that I'm doing. If I'm getting up and I'm living for everybody else and not just myself. So that's what I'm doing. That's what helps make, make me feel good and in turns and help hopefully help a lot of other people on a bigger scale. So let's head to Best Buy. Let's go make these, uh, these purchases and uh, Keep pumping out awesome content for you guys. services they help a lot of less unfortunate families less fortunate families with child care services not only that but you know for parents that can't afford kids school supplies and other little things or after school activities the YMCA steps up and you know either offers them large discounts or support to help pay bills or fees or they they sponsor them all together so knowing that ten thousand dollars that we raise is going back to the kids in Orange County that are, are in our need means a lot to me you know, showing that, you know, the things that I'm doing are enabling me to help other people makes me feel pretty good, so. Yeah. What was your name? Jamie, I'm the director here. So nice to meet you, Jeremy. Figure out what you guys love to do. Make sure you guys stay focused on it, work hard every single day. Take care of little things and make sure that you guys are following your hearts and following your passion. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do something. Because when you guys get older, if you guys continue working hard, all those little things you did leading up are really gonna pay off. my all physically and mentally into my preps. As I expect most competitors do when they get on stage, especially when they get to the pro level. 
Um, you know, it's very hard on your body physically and mentally. Rebounding after a show, you know, some people respond better than others, but for myself, I don't re rebound very well. My body crashes very easily, and physically and mentally, you know, the high from all the endorphins flowing, going into the show, coming up after, uh, the accountability aspect, the, you know, basically, I'm operating on all cylinders going into Olympia, and, you know, it's almost like I almost blow out my engine going once I get on stage. I'm, I'm going as hard as I possibly can mentally and physically, and then after Olympia, the engine's trying to cool down and just doesn't, doesn't quite catch up. And that's why you rebound. You don't necessarily eat as perfect just because it's a little bit harder to diet after competition or sticking to it, for me at least, because I don't have that obligation or of me getting on stage. Like that, the pressure of being on Olympia stage, you know, a week or two weeks from now, is usually what prevents me from eating what I want to eat. But after Olympia, I don't really have that, that obligation of the show. So having that cheat meal is a little bit easier for myself. You know, hence the rebound, packing on weight and going from seeing your body at the optimal level and then a month, six weeks, eight weeks later, seeing it slowly kind of fall apart to a certain degree. I wouldn't say fall apart, I still look decent, but not being at that four or 5% body fat, as a bodybuilder, can't mess with your head, and it has messed with my head, and it still continues to mess with my head. It's just a matter of how well I'm able to handle it. Um, I think a lot of people deal with this in competing, it is dealing with going from being an optimal shape to not being in, in the best state shape year round. And a lot of people beat themselves up over it, including myself, and it's something that has been tough for me over the last 10 years. And some people are able to deal with it, and they don't care, and they're, they're able to stay above it, which is, I commend you guys for that, because it's not an easy thing to do. Especially when, you know, we have the social media nowadays that high, hold you to this high standard. Like, you guys won't see me post very many pictures in the gym as much as I was leading up to contest prep. I don't look as good. You know, I don't feel as good. I don't feel like, you know, it's worthy of being on my social media because I have this image to uphold. And, um, you know, it makes me very concerned with the, the athletes going into the pro circuit this coming year with the rule change. Um, you know, this year, if you win a pro show, you don't necessarily qualify for Olympia, you get points for it, and you guys gotta keep fighting for your points to get into Olympia. And, uh, you know, it's definitely gonna make it a lot more challenging, but it's also gonna push a lot of the athletes to their absolute limits. So, for those of you guys competing in the pro circuit, those of you guys working your way through the NPC and get to the IFBB, just make sure you guys take your health very seriously. Make sure you guys take your body seriously, listen to your body, don't push your body past its limits where you're no longer gonna be able to perform at your optimal level. And you guys are getting shows back to back to back to back all year long, like, don't think you're gonna keep getting better. Your body's gonna to start to regress. It's gonna start beating itself up and it's gonna start taking a toll on yourself. You know, so make sure you guys take your health seriously. Make sure you guys are resting. Don't hit back-to-back -back shows year, year, year around. Plan your shows out accordingly. Plan them out smart to time yourself for Olympia. And um, I'm not saying this to hinder my competition anyway, it's because I care about you guys as competitors and as athletes. And I know what this sport takes. I understand what it can do to you mentally and physically. And, you know, I just know if you guys are chasing show after show after show, it's definitely gonna, you know, take a, it's gonna take a toll on you, not only in short term, but in long term. So make sure you guys are being smart, understand your body, and make sure you guys are um, just being precautious with everything. You know, the stage is great. The stage is, is, has provided me such a great life. It's what, we, it's what we live for, but at the same time, that's not what's uh, keeping us alive. So you guys gotta make sure you guys are taking, taking, taking uh, safe, proper safety precautions with your health and prioritizing that first. Because I tell you what, you know, no trophy is going to be worth your life. So make sure you guys are being smart and staying true to the sport and doing things the right way.